Welcome back. Um, this is question number one from the October 2019 International A-Level Mechanics M1 Mechanics M1 paper. And here we have a question about momentum and impulse, which is quite regularly uh, the question number one in these papers. Now it tells us about two particles P and Q, which have masses 3m and 2m respectively. The particles are connected by a light inextensible string. Initially, P and Q are at, are at rest on a smooth horizontal plane with the string slack. Particle P is then projected along the plane directly away from particle Q with speed 4u. At the same instant, particle Q is projected along the plane in the opposite direction with the speed 3u. Find the common speed of the particles immediately after the string becomes taut. Okay, so first of all, we have a string which is attached to two particles, P and Q. Okay, so let's say we have P over here. Let's have P over here. Let me make a... Okay, so this is P, say, and this is Q. Okay, the string that's joining them is initially, it's not um, tight, it's, it's slack. Okay, it's not taut, they say. Okay, so it's not kind of pulling them together or anything. It's just, you know, it's just a loose string. Okay, so you have P here and you have Q here. We know that the mass of P is 3m and the mass of Q is 2m. Okay, now, so basically what's happened is P has been projected in a direction away from Q and Q away from P. So P has been projected this way in the beginning and Q is being projected that way okay they were, we're told the initial speed of both of them so P is projected with the speed for you so the magnitude of this velocity the speed is for you this way and for Q it's this way through you okay so now um, that this is what's happening before the string becomes taut now when the string becomes taut basically what's going to happen is they're going to be acting as one particle. This is 3m and this is 2m. And they're going to have a common speed. Okay, a common speed. We're not sure which way it's going to be in right now. We don't actually have to t find the direction. We just have to find the magnitude of it. But their common speed is going to be after the collision. It's going to be common because they're going to be held together with this string. Okay, so this string will become taut, so now they will be acting as if they're one particle. Okay, so you can consider them as one particle moving in the same direction, because they're connected by the same, by a string, and they'll be moving in the same direction. So that's the key to answering this question. So we think about the total momentum before the collision, and the total momenta, momentum sorry, after the collision. Okay, so let's look at the momentum before the collision. So we can say the total momentum before, not the collision, well, before the string becomes slack, you can say, total momentum and before the string is slack is equal to the total momentum after. That's what we're using, the conservation of momentum after. Okay, so that's before the string becomes slack and that's after the string becomes slack. So let's look at it before. So we have to take care of directions. I'm going to take the right as positive. Okay, I'm going to take the right as positive. <clears throat> so in my diagram, if we look at the momentum for P, it's going to be the its mass, which is 3m, times its velocity, which is the opposite direction to what I'm calling positive. So I'll put this as minus 4u. Plus, and then we got for Q, the mass is 2m, and the velocity is 3u in our positive directions. So that will be 3u. Now, after the collision, we're con considering them as one particle, they have a common speed. So I can just write that, that this as 5m times the final velocity, which we have to find, final speed there. Okay, so this will help us find what this v is, which is what we have to find. That's minus 12mu plus 6mu equals 5mv. You can see the m's will cancel, and we're left with minus 6u equals 5v so therefore we can say v is equal to minus 6 over 5u so that's the velocity okay they're only asking us 
for the magnitude of the speed, the you know, magnitude of the velocity, the speed. Okay, they find find the common speed of the particle. So they're only asking us for the speed. So we, we don't write speed with a negative, it's a, it's a <coughs> scalar quantity. We can say the speed, therefore, is equal to 6 over 5u. If they said find the velocity or find the speed and the direction, then we would say that it's 6 over 5u in the direction that p was moving in initially. Okay, because you see, p was moving in this direction, in the negative direction according to us, and the final velocity is also negative, so that means that the, the, the um, velocity, its direction would be in the same direction that p was initially moving in. Now you don't mention to the left or to the right in an answer. In this question it doesn't matter because they're not asking us about the direction. But supposing the question asked us about the direction as well, which is quite common, a lot of students say, oh, my, mine is to the left because they've called left positive and right positive. So they'll say it's, you know, the speed after the collision is, you know, 6 over 5 u to the left. Okay, but we can't say to the left because you know, who told you to draw P on this side and Q on that side? P could have been on this side and Q could have been on that side. In that case, if you took this as positive, it would be to the right. So you don't mention left or right because your drawing, you know, was, you know, you just took, you know, P in one, one, one place and Q in the other place. You weren't told to do that. So, you know, you just did it according to your own, you know, your, how you felt to draw it. So you don't say left or right in your answer. You mention in the same direction as P or in the same direction as Q. So I would say here, if they ask us for the direction, the speed is 6 over 5U in the direction that P was projected initially. Because it can mean that same direction as it. So whether we took drew P on the right or the left, it won't make any difference then. Okay, we'll still have the correct explanation. All right, so that's the answer for question number one, part A. Now for part B, it says, find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on Q at the instant when the string becomes taut. So basically, the impulse, the impulse is the change in momentum of an object. Okay, you can think of it as m times v minus u. So if we find the, the final velocity of Q and we find the initial velocity of Q, we will be able to find the impulse. Okay, that's the impulse that was, you know, exerted on Q, all right? So this is the impulse that was exerted on Q that caused it to change its motion. So the, the final velocity of Q is the same as the common speed, which we've taken it as, um, you know, we've taken this as positive. So this is negative 6 over 5U. And the initial velocity of Q, if we look back in the question, was 3U in the positive direction. So the initial velocity of Q was 3U in the positive direction. So the change in momentum is going to be its mass. And the mass of Q is 2M. <clears throat> so we have 2M times V, which is the final speed, which is minus 6 over 5U minus 3U. Okay, so the impulse will be 2M times... And this is going to be minus 6 over 5u minus 15 over 5u. So this is going to give you minus 21 over 5u times 2m minus 21 over 5u. So if you multiply this, you're going to end up with the impulse being negative 42 over 5mu. So they want the magnitude. So you can say the magnitude is equal to... 42 over 5 m you can leave it like that you can write it as a decimal it's perfectly fine and that is the magnitude of the impulse exerted on q at the instant when the string becomes taut okay so of course um you know its direction is going to be in this direction because it's it's moving in the, it's moving this way and what happens is it ends up moving that way so the force will be you know, it kind of, it's, it's not only does it slow it down, it makes it change direction as well. So, of course, the impulse acting on Q is going to make, is going to be in a direction that causes it to change. So, if it's moving in this direction and it ends up moving in that direction, so the impulse must act in that opposite direction to its movement. Okay, that's why it comes out as negative here. We found the, the you know, the, the impulse, the change in momentum of Q is what caused it to change its, um, you know, speed and direction. Okay, so there's the answer 
to part B. So I hope that was clear. And, um, you know, as I said, take care of directions here. That's the way a lot of people make mistakes. They write, they would put 3m times 4u instead of minus 4u because they don't take care of the fact that, you know, these are moving in opposite directions. So you decide what side, what, what, what um, direction you want to take as positive and you stick by that and be consistent in all your equations. So if you took the right as positive, then you know the three u will be a positive velocity and the four u will be a negative velocity. Okay, but your answer here is only asking for the speed, so you don't care about the sign. All right, that's the velocity. Um, if they did ask you about the direction, don't mention left or right. Mention the direction of how these particles were moving. So you know minus six over five is in the same direction that p was moving initially. So you can mention something like that, but this question doesn't require that. So there we have the answer for question number one. I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Um, other videos on this paper will be found on the playlist that should appear somewhere in this region here. Other questions from momentum and impulse or mechanics M1 you'll find in this paper or this playlist that should appear on the um, over here. You can subscribe to my channel from this link and on the top of the page will appear um, a link to another M1 paper you might be interested in watching. Thank you and see you soon.